And I remember he said something. He was like, but you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, so what? He's like, well, this is a very dangerous thing. And like, <laughs> you can die. I'm like, then I'm in. <laughs> Maria, Fernanda, uh, welcome to the SALT session. Thanks so much for taking the time. Um, I understand you're in Portugal at the moment, so I usually like to start with a little bit of background, but um, due to the timeliness of what's going on over there, I'm super excited to hear about it. So um, thanks for being on. And can you can you tell us all about Nazare and what's been happening in the last few days? Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me. And it's been a couple crazy days. It was amazing. It's I feel like we were here to watch history almost. Yeah. Um four 100%. days ago. Um, well, first, like five days ago, there was the contest going on. I guess it's more like an expression session. It's called Gigantes de Nazare. Mm -hmm. And it's like most of the teams go out in the water and it's just you know, they try to catch the biggest waves and all that. And then the next day, it was like a record kind of day. So it was mostly yeah. just Sebastian and Lucas Chumbo in the water. And yeah. obviously their teams. Um, there was two other guys that surfed as well in the evening or like later on. Mm -hmm. um, but it was it was a crazy day. I, I feel like people haven't seen the size of waves in decades probably yeah well all and, the footage i've been watching there's talks of like world record size and everything yeah so yeah. i think we were super blessed to be here mm. um i it just i came um because uh, my surfer friend brought me here with her and her name is poli Ralla, and mm. It was, I mean, we, we did not come from the swell, you know? So yeah. just to be here while this happened was amazing. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. were you, did I see, cause I know you put on your Instagram, you're like, you know, like life changing day and everything. So were you like in the water or like on a ski? Were you out there? Is that what I saw? Or? So first thing in the morning, we were just outside. Um, mm -hmm. It was super scary, I guess. The whole wind and, and the waves mm -hmm. and the ocean was crazy. Yeah. And then later in the day, um, the Alamao, which is kind of like the head captain and the one that has the whole um, organization on Lucas Chumbo's team. Yeah. He, he allowed us to be in the water because, you know, we didn't want to put anyone in danger or anything. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> we're just, you know, we're starting to get here and like this is our yeah. first time. I mean, not our first time, but it's like one of our first times. So. Mm. Um, in the evening, he was like, yeah, I think the, the water is less crazy. So you guys can come in the ski and just, you know, watch from, from a little bit farther away. Um, yeah. so it was an amazing experience, you know, it's like mm -hmm. just teams in the water. Um, the waves, they were so big that you couldn't really tell they were big unless there was like yeah. a ski there. So you could see, you know, the perspective yeah. of it. Um, and I guess were you we shooting, have... were you shooting from the water? Yeah, like, well, from yeah. the ski, but yeah. Yeah, from the ski, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I did take my camera for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, from a little bit farther away. And then yeah. later, Alma was super nice to take me, you know, a little bit closer to the waves and like mm -hmm. more in the, not really in the inside, but like, yeah. you know, where the waves were actually building up and crashing. So yeah. um, I got some really cool photos. And like I said, it's like we didn't realize the size of it until... Mm -hmm we saw this photo taken from outside the water from the beach where mm. you can see our ski <laughs> compared to the wave and it looks yeah. massive and we're like was it really that big <laughs> yeah we didn't realize yeah. when we were there but okay i guess like seeing it from a different perspective because the whole water because of the storm the whole water was in movement and i guess mm -hmm. you don't really feel it or maybe it's the adrenaline and i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah yeah for sure it's a fascinating yeah. insight because like a lot of the footage you see of Nazare is just footage from the cliff from up near the lighthouse. Mm -hmm. And even though you can tell how big it is, it just seems to break so slowly. And it's like, it's real. I think it's hard for a viewer that's not there to really get a true understanding of the size and power of what's happening. So it's like, it's fascinating to see it from the water, but that's even a super interesting insight that there was even a little bit of like, you know, uncertainty of the size of even being out there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I feel mm. like this place is so has like Chris, like 
crazy visual effects you know it's like mm. you can be somewhere and it looks super big and then you're from another angle and it doesn't look that big i don't know it's yeah. just interesting yeah. the angles and how it creates an image that can change from one place to another yes yeah for sure yeah i guess that's mm -hmm. why there then becomes so much controversy about this biggest wave thing right because it's probably depending on the angle of the the film or the father that they're assessing it from <laughs> for sure i've realized yeah. that and so mm -hmm. you can tell you know like because you're like no no this angle is not good you know like the wave mm -hmm. looks way smaller and then yeah <laughs> you go to another place and the wave looks twice like the size of it yeah i don't yeah. know it's it's yeah. very interesting how how it all shifts from one place yeah. to another so <laughs> yeah 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 no it's it's super exciting as i said i've just been watching all the footage and it's, it's super timely that we're chatting while we're there but um yeah, I guess just to give everyone a bit of an insight, anyone who maybe like doesn't know who you are or whatever, can you give us a little bit of a background, just where it all began for you? So where, where you grew up and maybe just lead into sort of, I guess, how you got a camera in your hand in the first place. For sure. Uh, well, from I'm from Mexico City. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I definitely grew up inland, not close to the ocean, like the closest beach. Driving is like four hours. Yeah, wow. Um, but I grew up as a swimmer. Um, mm. I was like a high performance swimmer since I was seven years old, yep. um, all the way until I got into college. Um, I actually got, um, scholarship for swimming, Oh wow. but in Mexico, um, sports aren't that like strong or supported, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had to stop swimming to finish my, my, my school, you know, cause yep. I couldn't, there was not we didn't have a pool at the college yeah, yeah, in Mexico yeah. City. So it was yeah. interesting. Like, yeah, I'm getting a scholarship, but there's no way to trade here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had to like drive um, to my, to where I used to train, which was like yep. two hours wow. with traffic, you know, every yeah, day. Yeah. And so like imagine going to school eight hours plus yep. training, you know, I was training four hours a day, every single day. Yeah. Plus like, homework and stuff so i was like yep. there was no point so i stopped swimming okay finished my to get my degree mm -hmm. and when i graduated um i was like okay i couldn't find a job and i was a little frustrated and i was like why don't you go and volunteer she found this place called surfing the nations in hawaii mm -hmm. and she's like you've always liked surfing why don't you you know go for a couple months and see um how that goes Mm -hmm. By then, I had already had um, an encounter with like surfing and I guess surf photography, photography. Yep. Um, while doing my professional practices. I went to this hometown in Mexico City, um, uh, surf town in Mexico City. And there was like a group of groms that came with back then Trans World um, Surfing oh, yeah. Magazine. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so I remember I like. I kind of went to the surf breaks with them because they needed a mm -hmm. translator. So I was like, oh, I'll, I'll help translate. Like I, I remember they approached like the surf school from there yep. and the guy from the surf school was like, Oh, that would be great help. If you like help translate, you know, cause they were from California or like yeah. the U S. Yeah. And so I remember I was just going with them to all the surf breaks. And I remember thinking, I was like, how cool would it be to be like those photographers that get to travel mm -hmm. all around the world from beach to beach and just photograph the surfers, you know, yeah. but that was it. Like, yep. I honestly didn't think about it because mm -hmm. I mean, I'm from the city, like that's not, and I was studying and that's like, not, I don't know, a foreseeable future yep. from where you I'm You weren't from, photographing you know? yourself at this point or? No, I liked yep. photograph like yep. f photography and i remember i even told my dad like hey i want to study photography and he was like no yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hobby you're gonna study something good <laughs> like a real career <laughs> yeah real career yep yep i know that one <laughs> and so <laughs> i did business um yep. so focus in tourism because i was like I'm going to live by the beach. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like, you know, my way to approach is like, okay, I'm going to business in tourism. That's, that's awesome. going to get, you know, uh, where yeah, I want you'll end to up go. near a beach somewhere <laughs> if you do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, that's what I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so when I graduated that I went to Hawaii, um, mm. I met this guy that he grew up 
you know, in Kauai. And we mm -hmm. became really good friends. Oh. And so he was a bodyboarder. Well, he is a bodyboarder. And mm -hmm. I kind of learned from him, you know, because he would go surfing in the mornings. And he's like, I'm going to the beach. Do you want to come? I was like, sure. And then we mm -hmm. get there. And he's like, I'm going to go surf. Are you going to wait at the beach? I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going out with you. And he's like, but are you going to be swimming the entire time? I was like, yeah. So he like start gave like he would give me a pair of fins and yep. you know a boogie bird and he's like, well, you can sit in the, in the channel if you're up for it to be swimming for two hours. I'm like, sure. And so I guess that's how I got into it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I met. Well, he introduced me to the surf photographer Peter Sterling. Um, yep. He's his focus was more um, windsurfing and stuff, and he from Maui. Yep. Mm -hmm. um but he he wanted to pass along what he knew and now i realize i mean now there's a lot of online courses and workshops yeah. and all that but back i feel like i don't know 10 years ago or five yeah. years ago there was not this resources and definitely not yeah no one really wanted to teach anyone else you mm -hmm. know it's like more of a close yeah thing, I guess. definitely yeah so yeah yeah the fact that he was like yeah, I, I want to pass along what I know. I I feel like was a blessing, you know, because he was like, mm. he we, we got introduced and he was like, yeah, I'll I'll teach you if you're serious about it, but you'll have to come in the winter when the big waves are. Yeah. Um, And that was summer. So I was like, yeah, I'll come back. And I remember he said something. I was like, but you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, so what? He's like, well, this is a very dangerous thing. And like, you can die. I'm like, then <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> you know, that was Amazing. like the phrase that I needed. To yeah, get, totally. You know? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> you should get that as your branding t-shirt, <laughs> but you're a girl. <laughs> like, well, yeah, clearly. But <laughs> So That's I remember amazing. I went back home to Mexico yep. City, saved some money, and then came back to um, the North Shore. And yep. that's when I started. You know, with him, yep. I would like sit down and watch the ocean for hours. And I remember, mm. like, I was a strong swimmer, but I didn't grow up in the ocean. So I, there was a lot of things that I didn't know, you know, it's like the um, currents and channels and how the wind works and all these things that yep. where I was going to sit in the, like, in the lineup and all that. Um, so he kind of taught me that. And sure. the fact that I started hanging out with all the bodyboarders, I feel like also helped a lot, you know, yep. especially bodyboarders from Hawaii because they, they surf like heavy, yeah. heavy oceans. Yep. Um, and so they would take me to like some spots that I was like, okay, no one else is allowed to shoot here. I'm having this opportunity, you know, because it was like lo just locals. Yeah. I cannot be complaining. And even though I was scared sometimes, I was like, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to say anything because they're just not going to bring me anymore. You know, it's like the girl that cries when it's mm. big so no yeah. we're not gonna take her so i was yep. like okay i'm just gonna close my mouth and learn as much as i can from this guy <laughs> yeah yeah and so i owe a lot of what i know to all the bodyboarders i guess you know because they take me to all their um their heavy breaks yeah and yeah that's kind of how that's amazing I started yeah mm -hmm. so was there a in those early days, was there any moments like once you did start, obviously you had to get used to the, the ocean and everything. And I guess your swimming would have helped a little bit with that. But as you said, there's no like rips in a in a swimming pool. So there's a bit to get used to. But was yeah. there a moment with your photography when you, do you remember like, like a session or a photo or something that you took where you were kind of like something clicked and you were like, hey, I'm actually good at this or I can do this or this sort of thought I had one time back on the beach in Mexico saying this would be a great idea. Maybe... I feel like I'm a step closer to it now because I've taken this image or had this session. Well, yeah, there, there is a moment when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. Um, so I met uh, Bethany Hamilton oh, yeah. and yeah. I did a trip with her. We swam the Nepali coast mm. um, in three days. It was amazing experience. Um, yeah. I remember him, she invited me and she's like, Hey, so it was going to be me you, and this other friend. And the rest of our friends are going to kayak with, you know, the water and food and sleeping mm -hmm. bags and stuff because we did it in three days. So yep. it was like, um, I feel like it was six miles a day. So nine, 
K okay. each day. Yep. yep. That's a lot. And yep. we would, like <laughs> sleep. <laughs> yeah. And the first day was fine. But, like the last day was like, okay, yeah. I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> and I had not trained by then. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yep. I already stopped swimming. I was not mm. a swimmer anymore. Like I wasn't training. Yeah. Training. Yeah. Um, so it was, but it was, it was fun, you know? Mm. And, and I remember she was like, so how's photography going? I guess I already liked photography and I would like shoot around and bring my camera and everything. Yep. And I told her like, oh, I'm, I'm liking this. And so I remember she told me, it's like, if you're serious about like getting surf photography, you can come next winter. Cause we did in the summer again, you uh -huh. know, like yep. the next summer yes. after the first one I went, yep. um, you can come with me and, and practice, you know, and it's like, and that's kind of where it clicked. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So I'm a city girl from Mexico yep. City. Yeah. And I get the opportunity to practice with the most yes. well-known surfer in the world. <laughs> yeah. 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 This doesn't happen. Yeah. That often, Something's going you know? on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely a godsend. So yeah. Amazing. Um, I was like, okay, I think this is it. So I remember I went back home, mm -hmm. sold my camera, sold my um car yeah and bought a camera housing another ticket to come back next winter to hawaii and bought yeah. an old car i remember yeah. my dad was dying like he wanted to die he's like <laughs> that was on? the last car that i bought you, you know <laughs> this isn't the ago. business degree which... <laughs> <laughs> and i'm like okay it's fine i just bought an old car it's gonna be fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> and honestly i think it was the best decision ever because I mean, mm. I still use that camera to this day. It's like wow. my favorite camera. Yep. And it has brought me all over the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, I started a career thanks to that. So amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. definitely worth it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, definitely. That's insane. And so what does, I guess, to, to skip forward, and then it'd be good to kind of find out some paths along the way. So for everyone, like, what does your life look like now as a photographer in terms of, like, do you shoot for brands do you shoot with surfers like what is your kind of like you're obviously on a trip to Nazareth at the moment like what is your kind of photography life now um so I, I remember at the beginning I, I was very like headstrong about just doing surf photography mm -hmm. you know because that's why I left my entire city to life for yeah but of course as years go by you're like okay mm -hmm. maybe there's not that much work just yeah. in surf photography yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so definitely now I do like um brand work. Um yep. and I think I'm at the beginning I was like mm, now I, I I like it. Cool. Uh product photography, especially mm -hmm. like products that involve like water, a lot of bikini brands yep. and stuff like that, which I, I like. Yeah. Like doing that, you know, you're still in the beach, Yeah, so it's related in a related place. industry. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um mm. I've done some events, yep. uh, which I don't love, but hey, it's work and yep. it's great. And I yep. keep doing photography, so it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm starting to give some workshops as well. Yeah, um, I, I actually that. have, amazing. yeah, I have a workshop next weekend in mm -hmm. Spain. Cool. Um, and then a retreat here in Portugal in two weeks. So. Oh, amazing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm starting to do that. And then, um, yeah, all kinds yeah. of photography now, you know, yeah. even though that's amazing. Obviously that's a cool little, like, is... it's a cool little full circle from um, the stuff with, like, with Peter Sterling, how, like, he kind of was teaching you all of the stuff early on. And now you're sharing all your knowledge now as well, like, through courses and stuff. So, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, like, through the years, a lot of people have more interest in that because I remember mm. the beginning is, like, you wouldn't see that many photographers in the water, but then 10 yep. years from now, like people like it and it's just yep. fun and everyone has an Instagram now. So they Definitely. want to share those photos and For sure. yeah. 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 And more. cameras have become so much more affordable, like the gear and that kind of stuff. And yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. And so then can you kind of piece in a little bit of the gaps there? So then from that first story you told about when you got into it yeah. and then you went back to Hawaii to shoot, you went and bought a housing. So what then was your first maybe your first paid gig or how did you make, you know, did you go into the world of saying like, you know, now this is a nice hobby. I've been invited back. I'm starting to get a bit confident. Like how does that then progress into a career? I guess. I, I guess it was always a dream, but it wasn't like a goal. 
Mm -hmm. where I still didn't see it. You know, it's like, okay, this is fun. And I'm very, I'm a competitive person. (laughs) (laughs) And I remember from the first winter I spent there, I was like, my goal is to shoot pipeline, you know, it was like, mm-hmm. that was my goal. Yep. And I mm-hmm. remember after practicing or like after being in Kauai for a month, I was like, I think I'm ready, you know? So I remember I flew to Oahu and I swam at pipeline, but it wasn't a huge epic day. It was just mm-hmm. like a normal, um, I don't know, six to eight mm-hmm. wa- like waves, you know, it's like, mm, it was good to start. And so yep. I was like, okay to get that um, feel going for next winter. So I was like, okay, I think next winter I can do this. And slowly I started, you know, just being out there and going every winter. And there's so many people that always ask me, what is it to be a woman? I honestly think that open doors, because everyone's like, so are are people nice or not in the water? It opened some doors, you know, because it was like, it was just me in the water and, some other girl and so that all always like opens you know like more doors because like oh what are you doing there or so i remember i think the first time i got a photo published was surfline or something like that Uh and i was like oh maybe i can you know i can start reaching out to magazines and stuff and just getting my work out there more i'm so bad at pr especially when it comes to my work (laughs) (laughs) Sure. <laughs> <laughs> gotta admit that <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i was never good with that yeah um but i i think it was just more like a snowball slowly you know it's like it just start getting more exposure mm. and then yeah. it's mostly people that approach me than me approaching others you know <laughs> like hey okay. yeah. can I? um and i complain a lot about instagram you know it's like how it kind of has ruined everything but at the same time that's where i get most of my work or like people yeah. know me mm-hmm. so you know it's it's a love hate relationship <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah for sure it's nice to hear that but actually because that's that's exactly the same as me and so it's like sometimes you talk to some people and they're just kind of like it's all like anti-social media depending on like you know if it's how pure you want the photography to be but at the end of the day it's like just it's a platform to share and it's like yeah. you've got to you know, you used to have to pay to advertise your stuff and now you can do it for free. So if it brings in, um, if it brings in work, then yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm so tired of putting so much because it's time and effort mm. to put mm. into social media. And like, what am I going to post? Sure. I'm gonna... Sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to give up. I'm not going <laughs> to keep posting on that. But sometimes I'm like, oh, maybe, you know, I yep. probably should be posting right now. <laughs> 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 but it it does help to bring at least more people interested in your work or like mm-hmm. expose yourself and your work to yep. more people all around the world. Like you said, it's just like a free tool okay. to get your work known around the world. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah, a lot of the work comes through Instagram and like contacts, you know, it's like, Oh, someone knows that you're a photographer and they reach out to you and that's how um, you get work. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, amazing. it's just yeah. been slowly building up at some point. So at the beginning, I was still giving, um, I was swim coach since mm-hmm. I was 18 years old, I guess. Okay. I would give swim lessons and then I would train some people for triathlons or, you know, um, races and stuff. And I, I liked it because it was water related. And, you know, I love the ocean, the water, the, the pool, everything that has to do with swimming so yeah yeah i really like that but then a lot of traveling made it hard to keep you know my my groups or um my clients i guess Mm -hmm. um and so slowly i i feel like it was just like a smooth transition where i stopped having that many clients and like the swim coaching thing and then i started getting more work especially with products and stuff which is better money yeah. i guess yeah yeah so i was sure. like oh maybe i should maybe i should just like start doing this full time like try to mm-hmm. do photography full time and yep. it does make me happy so <laughs> yeah amazing yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome so then 
for people that um don't know and hopefully we'll put up some photos like throughout this interview but you shoot in a lot of big wave conditions right so from mexico to i guess to pipeline to chopu that kind of thing so despite the fact yeah. that despite the fact that you're a girl like for anyone <laughs> these are like <laughs> for anyone these are uh like crazy conditions so like what sort of i guess like practices do you have obviously you're a strong swimmer but there'd have to be i guess some mindset practices that are going to that like when you're out in these big conditions like what is it that you're kind of doing in preparation and doing when you're out there well i feel like either you have it or not i've realized mm -hmm. this with the years but you see cool. these people and like i hang out a lot with the big wave surfers and you can tell like i can tell if someone starts saying like, oh, I want to be a big wave surfer, you can tell who is going to make okay. it and who is not. Because mm -hmm. there's, and, and I was talking to my friend about this and I, I feel like it has to do a lot of like why you're doing it. You know, if yep. it's just for like the ego or the recognition and that you yep. can tell because the person gets nervous and mm -hmm. it just becomes like um chore more than yep. a love for it yeah um so might be doing it for the outcome this. more than the actual thing yeah 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 mm. of enjoying the moment yes yeah and I've re i never realized this before mm -hmm. i just knew i was competitive and i wanted to you know compete with myself like i can swim more i can swim more um i love adrenaline mm -hmm. i've realized that too i guess yep. you become addicted to it you know after mm -hmm. you um and i see it more when i'm in the city because if i'm in the city for a long time I started getting anxious and I didn't know how it was or why it was before. Mm. But if I'm like out of the ocean for a while or like with that adrenaline, I start needing it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I, I like being at back home, you know, with like my family and friends and stuff. But after, after some weeks or months, couple months, I'm like, okay, I need I need the ocean. I need I need, you know, <laughs> yeah. adrenaline. Yeah. Um yeah. And so I guess that's one part of it when you have it and you kind of need it. And then the other one is being prepared. And I'm yeah. very strong on like being as prepared as you can. Of course, the ocean um, is a very changing environment. You know, like you can be the best snowboarder. And of course, there's changing factors, but the mountain is there. It's not yes. going to move. 100%. The yeah. ocean is moving, you mm -hmm. know, all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And from one wave to another it can be a completely different experience so that means from yeah. 15 or 20 seconds to the other 20 yeah you know yep. 15 seconds mm -hmm. um so i you can prepare as much as possible but there's always going to be that factor that's going to be changing yep. um but i think safety is the most important thing and so training and being ready for those waters and um a lot of like mental piece i guess which yes. i've realized for me is just if i'm well trained and if i am well prepared i'm mm. so much at, at peace that if i just get like i see it when i go to puerto when i'm not that well trained at the beginning of the season i feel it and i'm a little scared mm. you know it's like yeah. by the end of it i'm already trained i'm already used to it and so i'm more comfortable in the water because you yeah. know like you have what it takes to be out there yeah um and so a lot of apnea training like especially dynamic you know is like doing exercise in the water without mm. breathing and all this yeah. exercises that help you um be more prepared i guess mm -hmm. for yep. any outcome that wasn't expected yep um mm. it definitely helps and having a good support group too is like the friends that i've made in this like big wave environment it's mm -hmm. so crucial because you know sometimes i remember so i broke my knee while well, tore my ligaments and discus i think like seven years ago yeah and i was going out actually with a friend that's here with me or like mm -hmm. brought me here and it was a big day at cicatella is like 15 to 18 feet and mm -hmm. i remember i was you know it's like i was ready in my mind, probably yeah. wasn't, but <laughs> I was ready to go. I didn't care. And she had this feeling. She's like, I don't 
think it's a day for us to be out there. I was like, you're being crazy. Let's yeah. go. Out. And I now yeah. know that I should have listened to her. You yep. know, it's like you always have that sense or like that voice inside your hair, head yep. that you need to listen to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't have it. But in this, case, <laughs> in this case, she had it and I should have yep. listened to her, you know, and I didn't. Yep. And mm -hmm. that's when I got hurt. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's very important to have like that group of friends and listen to them as well. So For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing <laughs> though because I think it's different. it's so cool for people to hear because everyone sees the photos, right? But it's like, it's, that's why I like this like podcast and, you know, having these conversations because it's just good to see the the effort that goes in behind that and the time spent in the water and that kind of thing. Like a couple of the um, the big wave photographers over in Western Australia that I've spoken to have just sort of got to a point where they've said, look, it, it kind of, it's at a point now where it probably looks crazier to an onlooker than it is because I've spent so much time there and I understand everything so well and I'm so well prepared that it's kind of, it's, you know, it's probably safer than it looks, but it's because of all of the time and pre preparation and all that, all the hours put in um beforehand like it's not like you're just jumping in the water and taking these photos there's like so much behind it so yeah that's really cool yeah mm. yeah, yeah yeah for definitely. sure yeah yeah, yeah. and like so you just knowing the waves that you swim at you know because you 100%. cannot go to a place and you don't know anything about it and you're like ah, just gonna jump in the water it's like okay you probably need to study more of the place <laughs> definitely definitely yeah yeah so along these lines you got a quote that you had on your social media um, you always have two choices, your commitment versus your fear. So what can, what advice, I guess, could you give to everyone? This could be related to literally like fear of going in the ocean, fear of like taking the leap and saying, I'm going to have a photography career instead of a business career. So like what sort of practices do you bring into your life around that? I, th I think it's all of it. It's like um, fear of failing, fear of leaving what's, known to you for the unknown mm -hmm. um and also fear of the ocean um after yeah. my injury um i've realized that i feel like before i didn't I didn't get scared or i didn't get much of that fear feeling i was just i guess you're also more naive or more oblivious to the dangers of it and then after yep. that it's just like started using more my head more you know it's like okay mm -hmm. Sometimes that fear can help you, but don't let it stop you. You know, it's like, yeah. maybe, like use it to help you get prepared better and um, push you into be better at what you need to do without yeah. it freezing you or yeah. stopping you from enjoying life. Mm -hmm. um, and I always love that saying that um, goes like, don't exactly know the word by word, but uh, yeah. like fear um can save your life panic mm -hmm. can kill you you know it's like when when you yep. let that panic or like that fear take control of you and your emotions Absolutely. and your decisions yeah it's like game over but if you use fear um in the good way then it can save your life you know it's like if you have this fear it's like okay you go to the root of it why am i being scared at the moment you know it's like i'm not ready for this is the ocean not safe right now or it's just natural fear that we always feel because we all have that um self-preservation you know instinct i guess yeah. Yeah. um so i i think it is very important to analyze where this fear is coming from and go to the root of it yeah um and then i remember this day that we went out um to the swell that just happened here mm -hmm. uh i told my friend like let's go and i get like that is like and and she told she told me it's like mm, I don't know like okay you don't know because you have that feeling again that we're gonna get injured yeah <laughs> <laughs> or what is what you're yeah. feeling right now yeah. and she's like yeah. no no I don't have a bad feeling it's just like let's just make a check on why are we wanting to go out mm -hmm. and I thought that was very smart of her and it was like okay what is the root of our desires to be out there and like mm -hmm. because obviously we're not gonna surf yep and you know it's for me, it was to just experience um, the ocean to its maximum yep. power, you know? And, like, mm -hmm. for me, it's so beautiful. And I think that's why I take photos because mm. I don't think there's anything more beautiful and powerful than the ocean. For me, that is it, you know? It's like God's creation to the max. And yep. how we're not in control, I think it's something that 
just amazes me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think you just absolutely answered that question from before. The fact that you even just said then that you just wanted to go out and feel the ocean's power means like 100% for you, it's experience first and probably photo outcome second. Do you know what I mean? Which is like you said, what it needs to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I realized that because I so many people ask me like, oh, so what else do you like photographing? And it's, I like photograph, of course, but it's not my main focus, you know, it's like for me, feeling the ocean, the power and the adrenaline is, is what I do this for. And yeah. then the, like the photo is just to show what I'm feeling to people that are probably never going to be able to experience yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why my surf photography is way better than my event photography, you know, because I truly believe. Different, yeah that an artist portrays what they're feeling. So if you're yep. feeling amazement and wonder and you're enjoying and loving the moment, you're going to, mm -hmm. if you're a good photographer, I guess, you're going to show that in your photos. Yeah. But if you don't feel passionate about what you're shooting, that kind of shows as well. So mm -hmm. for me, yep. the ocean is what makes me feel alive. And, you know, I'm just completely immersed in the moment and not thinking yep. about anything else. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I like surf photography as much or like wave photography yep. um, other than, I don't know, wedding photography or whatever. Yep, yep for sure. And yeah. And so I, I guess when you enjoy and love what you do, it just shows in your work. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. And in saying that on the complete flip side, because you are a surf photographer, is there ever a point where like, do you ever visualize shots that you want to get or before you go out are you ever kind of visualizing like what you want a photographic outcome to be or is it always just adapting to the conditions that are there and creating something like in unison with what's there or is there sometimes you're like i really want to get this type of shot at this place and there's a you know a goal behind it um so few times I do go with a goal in mind you know mm -hmm. especially if you're shooting for someone or like a brand yeah. or with a yeah. surfer in particular but if I'm just going out um you know on a big day because I want to then mm. no I just yeah. try to enjoy the moment and capture yep. what it's going on and what's happening yeah and I know a lot of photographers are completely different but for me mm. I like to enjoy what's going on and yep. just portray that in my photos you know yep. like show the people what happen and went down yep. on that day yeah sometimes you know you want a, a specific shot because i don't know you've been wanting to get that shot in a while yep. or whatever yeah and i do go for it but most of the times honestly no <laughs> yeah yeah so are you shooting so are you shooting then um often like not for say like a work project like if there's good stuff you'll just go out and shoot I guess for the sake of shooting and then maybe look at like, is there something I can utilize these photos for afterwards or is there like a work intention in mind a lot of the time? Um, so I would say maybe like 70, 30. So 70% mm -hmm. of the time I just jump in the water because I love it. And then, okay. so if I can be like, if I'm at a beach down, I will be in the water every day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And so like 30% is just like work that I actually yep. have to go shoot a surfer or for, you know, a, a product or a man or yeah. like something, you know, Yeah. but a lot of, even like the magazines, it's at least for me, it's more like most of the times you approach them like, Hey, today was a great day. You know, it's in the water. I got this photos Yeah. Uh, than the other way around the other or way. Yeah. they come and like, Hey, do you have, photos we're looking photos of the surfer of this place and then i already have you know in file or whatever the archives yep. um yeah. so yeah it's more i jump in the water because i want to shoot yep. you know like if the conditions are good or it's good size yeah and then i you know i see what i i do with that <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah it's amazing so you're in portugal now obviously like traveling like you were on as you said you probably got fortunate with the the timing of everything but you were there anyway are you traveling yeah. are you traveling much to shoot i guess first of all like his home still mexico or where are you based yeah. these days my yeah. my base is mexico city so yep. um yep. So and so then are you traveling from the ocean to, yeah are you traveling much to shoot yeah so right now i'll be in between portugal and spain for a month and a half okay. um or two months and then 
most of my summers are spent in Puerto Escondido. Um, yeah. Although, I don't know, maybe this year will change. We'll see, mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully. <Yeah. laughs> and I, I was just in, by, uh, it was December. I was at, um, I went for the big swell to Todos Santos, um, mm -hmm. to that island. So yep. I, yeah, I kind of just travel around for, mm -hmm. um, for the waves. Yeah. And yeah, it's just, it's easy to travel from Mexico City. You know, it's like you can get anywhere in the world almost. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, for now, that's the base. I don't know. Yeah. I might. Do the cool. switch later but right now yeah that's what did i, I read some of it that you wanted that at one point in time you wanted to do a, a western australia trip yes or something and document it or because <laughs> i think yeah. even last time we, last time we did um an interview i think i had on your uh your bucket list destination was australia and fiji so are they still yet they're to be still done? in my bucket list yep. yes yep. <laughs> well australia i had the plans to go when the like when COVID started, you know, when the pandemic oh, of started. Course. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. everything changed and mm -hmm. it just, yeah. I mean, it went on for some years. So <laughs> mm, I guess the whole restrictions and all that. So yeah, yeah the plans changed and I haven't been able to go back to that plan, mm -hmm. initial plan, I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I had everything, you know, it's like, I remember I was going to go, I think April of 2020 and then everything yeah. shut down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, but yeah. hopefully in the near future right now, um, this year I might go back to Chile. Last year I went to Chile. Um, mm -hmm. So it might, yeah. might be um, yeah. the beginning of I mean, the first half of the year, Chile and hopefully Brazil. Oh yeah. Um, and so, yeah. And then winter is over here, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's been amazing. And I'm like, you know, I, we're starting to build a good group and like relationship here and everything. So I'm yeah. loving it. You know, it's yeah. like these big waves, I guess. I mean, they are the biggest waves in the world. So absolutely. Yeah. Now yeah. that we've seen it from the now water, that you've seen maybe I the biggest. I'm hooked. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's epic. So yeah. that's interesting, like being over there, because I was kind of thinking, like, how do you think it's become like we, we touched on the fact that like lots of people shoot these days so do you think it's become more difficult to stand out in the world of surf photography like how hard is it to stand out um and i guess is it like that you have to approach things in a different way i guess like even from the even from the nazare point of view right like now a few years ago i was talking to um Heli, i'm on the podcast um a couple of months back and he was talking about the fact that like you know he was there shooting it when no one was around, but now it's just such a world map that it's been photographed so many times. And so like, are you going there thinking I need to try and find a different angle on this to stand out? I need to kind of approach this differently. Like how does that work in your mind? Oh yeah, for sure. I feel like the competition is bigger and bigger every year for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and here, especially, you know, it's like, so the first time I came here was in 2019 and then last year so it was like a five year difference and it was a huge change from the first time i came to here you know it's like even yeah. five years ago there was not that many people even though it was already you know like people would come for surfing and stuff but now yeah. that you have um tv shows and like mm. hbo and all yeah. this madness yeah. going on it's like cameras yeah. that mm. are literally for theater you know yes. and like cinema and all that and yes. it's just like of course you cannot compete with that yeah. you know it's like at least not me yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but i've also so a lot of people what they do are like the athletes they bring their own photographers and that's how i got here this time yeah um because they need you know they need um footage for them and they need yeah. their own um i don't know they have their own sponsors so they need yes. a lot of everything material yep. for their yep. everyday Instagram, I guess. Yep, and sure. so that's how a lot of the uh, photographers come, you know, it's like uh -huh. with someone else. Yes. And so most yep. of the surfers have their own photographers. And yep. even though they also need different angles and, you know, it's like you cannot be in all places at once, you know, you, yes. you, you yep. can be in the water, but like the other guy has a drone and the other one has like yep. um, some side of the cliff and then the other one has the beach. And like, there's so many angles that you can get. 
Yeah. Um, but they're kind of focusing honestly, on their own guy a lot of the time anyway. So, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. So that's kind of how I got here. And there is another, like, goal I have. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to start um, driving, and that's how I came the first time. I took the, um, you know, the initial jet ski and yeah. rescue and okay. towing um, yep. course. And so this is like my goal for the next couple of years. Like I want to get mm-hmm. good at that. Yeah. Um, and I guess it's kind of like a transition. I photography and swimming and big waves. It's always going to be, you know, like my passion. But right now, mm-hmm. um, the whole driving, the skiing, it's you know. I guess also a way of looking into the future because I know I'm not going to be like my body is not going to be able to be swimming uh, big waves for, I don't know, 30 more years, you know, it's Mm. like you get older and your body gets older. So um, I guess the ski and, and you see it with a lot of the people that are here is like, it gives you a second life, you know, because then you have a machine that is doing the hard work for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you still get to be so there and I would, with that adrenaline and yeah, yeah. exactly and mm. so i want like in the next few years i want to start getting you know not now that i'm still i guess yeah. young or i can yeah. still swim and a lot <laughs> yeah i want to you know start getting good at it because i yeah. know it takes years to get to totally. that point so yeah amazing. that's my focus right now <laughs> yeah for sure for sure so you touched on your um your teaching earlier and i'd say you've done some stuff so can you just tell us a little bit more about that so they just in-person workshops like what's your sort of I guess what have you done with that what's your goals with that yeah um I I don't like being in front of public <laughs> you know <laughs> I'm, I'm like <laughs> I have um stage bright and yeah yeah I don't know it's weird as like I like being behind the camera, not in front of the camera. Yep. Yeah. Somehow, I think most of us you know, do. Through... Yeah. <laughs> As photographers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's so weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like people are, but you're around cameras all the time. I'm like, yeah, behind them. Not behind them. In yeah. Front of them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I started doing this because people approached me, you know, it's like, especially this girl, she was like, hey, so I want to be coached by you. I was like, okay, this is weird. But at the same time, I remember someone taught me, you know, and like gave me yeah. tips and all that. So yep. I was like, okay, yeah, I think I can do that. And there was more and more people that would like reach out to me and ask for courses and stuff. So I was like, and I guess now that I think about it, it's also the fact that I'm a woman. It makes mm-hmm. it more approachable, I guess, for other women. Yep. Um, yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They feel more comfortable or identified i don't know yeah yeah well, um, i mean it's, it isn't like it is inspiring in its own right i mean that the, the reality is that previously like you know in the past like you said when you first had your camera and um the guy said that thing to you like it probably it was a male dominated industry so that just is for sure is. yeah i mean not anymore but yeah so but it's still inspiring i think for for young girls to to see what you're doing so yeah yeah, no, and I, I do think about that, you know, it's like the first time I swam at Waimea, I, I didn't remember seeing anyone in the water shooting, but I remember mm-hmm. my surfer girlfriends and they would paddling out, I was like, if they can paddle out with a surfboard, I can swim, you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. I'm a strong swimmer, I can swim, mm-hmm. but I guess it does take a woman to, you know, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. they're women as well, and they're surfing these waves, I can swim. Yep. And so I guess it's the same, you know, mentality, or the same switch yeah. in your brain. It's like, oh, if that woman is taking photos in the water, then I can do that. So Definitely. Yeah, it's great. No, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. So what would mm-hmm. be your kind of, I guess, sort of to wrap it up, like, it's because you do some teaching. Like if someone's, there's a lot of people watch this podcast that are sort of just getting into photography or being doing a little bit of photography, want to get into some ocean stuff. So like, what would be your main advice as far as just, you know, just getting into it, especially with ocean stuff? yeah well first of all be as ready as you can you know like Mm. prepared and trained um and like i said i'm like big in safety ocean Mm -hmm. safety and not putting others in risks um because if you're you know struggling the water or something someone's gonna have to go save you and then you are putting that life in danger as well so Mm. To minimize yeah. the risks is so important, at least for me. And um, I'm big mm. on that. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, for now, 
like you said, I have, well, I gave a couple courses already and I guess it's just like passing along what I know and helping people be as prepared as possible or like mm. what I can, you know, pass along of what I know. Um, but yeah, I think it's following your heart and doing it for the love of it. Mm. You know, it's like not yeah. for recognition, not for egos because we mm -hmm. see this all the time especially in surfing yeah it's it's a sport of a lot of ego you know mm. it's like i grew up playing other sports you know tennis and soccer and all this um sports and, I, and yeah. surfing is one of the most egocentric <laughs> sports i've seen you know yeah. or like experience and yeah. it's crazy so yeah i think it's always important to analyze why you're doing what you're doing Mm -hmm. And I think if your heart is in it, then yeah. everything else follows, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's just like get ready as much as you can, prepare and follow your heart. <laughs> yeah. No, that's an amazing answer. And I'm, I'm extra glad that I asked it now because that's one of the things that concerns me a little bit with surf photography and like the social media world and the instant gratification world is people see the photos and then want the outcome. But for a surf photo, especially like an ocean photo in the water, there's a lot of steps between that safety and preparation being one of the main ones. And if it's just this instant gratification of like, oh, I saw this amazing photo, I want to go and get it. And then you're putting yourself mm -hmm. in these dangerous situations solely for the outcome of potentially someone seeing a photo and saying it's great. Like there's just all that ego that you're talking about. There's just so much like potential for that these days. And so I hope people like really listen to like what you just said, because all of that preparation stuff and then like you said earlier about the big wave guys like you can tell the people that are meant to be out there because they're doing it for the right reasons they're not doing it for the ego outcomes they're doing it because it's they need that like they need that they can't sit in a house for too long without being out in big waves because it's like yeah, yeah yeah so it's really cool so and it um, is so crazy like especially this trip you know it's like these waves are no joke mm. and you see there's very very few surfers that you can tell they're having complete fun you know it's yes. like they're literally just doing it for the fun yeah and the rest of them mm -hmm. i don't know their true intentions but mm. it's probably it's ego it's probably i don't know but yep. it's just like there is very few people that do it for the fun and yeah or like solely because of that and you can yep. tell mm -hmm. and they're probably some of the best you know because yeah. they're mm. enjoying what they're doing and like we were talking before that when you put your heart and you you know, that shows in your work, in everything yeah, you do. Definitely. And so yeah. that is, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe the other ones are more successful economically or whatever, but then, you know, at the end of the day, you want to be happy doing what you do. <laughs> mm, for sure. Yeah. 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 No, that's amazing. Look, I think that's a perfect way to finish it up. So thank you so much for your time, especially during this trip with like everything's going on. I really appreciate you. Uh, taking the time and hope there's some more waves yeah. for you later today but um yeah super inspiring thank story <laughs> and thanks for all your honesty and your answers and um yeah i know people are really going to love it so yeah thank you so much well thank you for having me and yeah <laughs> hopefully <laughs> meet you in person one day in the waves <laughs> definitely awesome cool see you